First, I just want to say right off the back, my name is Tyrone Muhammad. I'm a funeral director here in New Jersey, and I'm going to cut straight to the chase. I ain't going to sugarcoat nothing. I ain't going to give you a watered-down version. I ain't going to tell you something that's just popular. No, I'm going to give it to you real. If you ain't hear from nobody else that's telling you the realness, you ain't hear from nobody else. As a funeral director, you, you um, want to talk to those who are just loving these brothers, these rappers, in fact. Rappers such as Rick Ross, rappers such as Little Wayne, those are out there having you fall in love with that nonsense, having fallen in love with thinking that that's reality when they're talking about violence. And, but they live living other than that. See, they're walking around with bodyguards and et cetera, and they got you out here gangbanging, got you out here shooting and killing one another. But listen, all that, the reality of it is, is when I see you. When I see you, it's over. It's over. Why? You're dead. You're gone, and, not, and, you're, and you're dead because of foolishness, right? And you come in here all shot up, bullet holes everywhere. Um, you have, you've been to the medical examiner. The medical examiner butch you up, chop you all up, gut you open, take all your heart, your organs, your, your, your liver, your kidneys, your intestines. They remove your brain, gut you out. A guy cut you out, and now what happens now? You leave off a cold environment there, you come to the funeral home, we put you on the coal embalming table. And while you're on that coal embalming table, we put coal embalming fluid in you, a cold water. See what I'm saying? And as, after all that, we're watching your cold blood run down the tables. Why? Because you fell in love with a fantasy. You, you fell in love with something that wasn't even real. See, they got, they got you buying their products, and they're not even living that. They're not even living that lifestyle. So they, they got you all thinking that that's real. No, that ain't real. Real is when your mother is before me. Real is when your mother can't afford to pay for your funeral. Real is when I got a patch of those bullet wounds, them bullet wounds on you. See, that's real. See, see, that's real. See, Rick Ross ain't here to pay for your funeral. Rick Ross, Little Wayne and them ain't here to help your mother buy a casket to put you on the ground. No, it's your poor mother. See what I'm saying? I'm sick of it, man. Ain't, ain't, no, ain't no damn outcry. Ain't, ain't nobody fed up. Ain't nobody care about you. Your homies don't give a damn about you. Why is that? Yeah, they homies on the street. But when it's, come, when it's time to come in here to pay that bill, ain't nobody in here with your mother. Your mother in here by herself, putting her little pennies, her nickels, and her dimes, and her hard-earned dollars here to put you at rest for some foolishness. Think that over, man. Think it over. I mean, I don't know nobody that want to rush to a grave. I, don't, I, I just can't even see somebody trying to rush to get into a casket. To be down. Down for what, man? Think that over. Down for what? And at the day, when they put you in that ground, and I've, and I've been to so many funerals, I've directed so many funerals, and after they eat that chicken and macaroni and cheese, get that Hennessy, smoke a little weed, you gone, man. Off to the next one, man. Everybody is profiting off of off the death of young black people. Everybody is profiting from it. The medical examiner, the hospitals, and the hospitals profit even more because why? Because when you get shot and they trying to keep you alive, you ain't dead yet. They still keeping you alive by means of artificial, meaning that they can have a mechanical device on you keeping you alive, right? On the respirator, or you close to death, they harvesting your organs. Taking your organs, man, your kidneys, right? Taking your heart, and your mother and father know nothing about that, right? But then they go sell your organs or put them right on the black market, should I say. So now your mother, who don't have money, think this over, think this over. Your mother, who don't even have money to pay for your funeral, but yet your organs are so valuable that it's going over to somebody else on the market where they're paying twenty five and fifty thousand dollars and your mother see nothing of that. Right? Not only has she lost her son, she now his organs is being distributed to other people where they cash it in on it. Right? So you need to start thinking about this, man. Before you start going out here and talking about that you down with this set, down with that set, man, I'm telling you the real the real story is, man, you're gonna end up in the funeral home. I'm telling you. And you probably saying you ain't got nothing to live for. You got everything to live for, man. You got everything to live for. You got to understand that you matter. Just as the next man that may have an education, that may have a lot of money, and you may not attain that right now, you still matter, man. So many of our young brothers, nowadays sisters too, end up in the graveyard. So much potential. Gone, man. Some of the answers and cures that we need in our community, gone.
See? And what we got to do, man, we got to start uniting and realize that, man, we are fighting for the resurrection, for the totality of our people. We got to understand that we are fighting for our people, man, for our very existence here. Now, I'm tired as a funeral director. Now, I mean, I don't know why other funeral directors ain't stepping up. I mean, yes, I mean, you got to, why other funeral directors ain't stepping up? Why I'm the only one out there crying out in the, in the wilderness, man, trying to get you to see the reality, man? Huh? Well, I mean, well, I mean, well, I mean, do you are you just that much in love and getting in the casket? Is you just that much in love with seeing how many people gonna come to your funeral? Are you just that much in love to see how many people gonna sign a register book? Are you that much just in love to see how your prayer card and your program is? You must be a damn fool. You gotta be a fool, man. Cause once you in that casket, you ain't getting out of it. It's over. It's done. So what we gonna start doing? And we out in the streets every day. We out in the streets every This is Zechariah, chapter 11 and verse 4. Thus saith the Lord my power, Feed the flock of the slaughter, whose possessors slay them, and hold themselves not guilty. And they that sell them say, Blessed be the Lord, for I am rich, and their own shepherds pity them not. All right. And this lesson is going to be entitled. And first and foremost, all praise to Yahweh, Bahashem, Yahweh Shai. Double honor to the apostles and the elders of Great Millstone. Shalom to the hopefully elect. This lesson is going to be entitled, Why Does Black Culture Result in Death? <clears throat> and basically, you've seen this uh, black, so called black funeral director. It says, This says, uh, Black funeral director tells the truth. And this guy's going on and on. Now, the first thing you notice, his name was what? Something Muhammad. I, th I forget his first name, but his, his last name was Muhammad. So you already know this dude is a Muslim. He don't know what the hell is going on. He just knows some of the truth, just like Muslims. Muslims know some stuff about the truth, but overall, they don't know what the hell is going on, man. All right, the bottom line is this. You so-called Negroes, Latinos, and Native Americans are the children of Israel. You're the Israelites. And the reason that your, your culture... It's stained in death is because you've been being wicked, man. And the most high punished you by putting you under the curses. And in the scriptures, you're known as the flock of the slaughter. Now, this guy, he made a lot of good points. He said, why is it that, you know, with this hip hop and all this stuff, you blaming it on hip hop, but it goes, it's deeper than hip hop. Now, hip hop is destructive. It has shaped the minds of our people and, and, and the young people are, you know, completely gone. And the enemy used that. The enemy used hip-hop and black culture you know as cultures of death right from the crips and the bloods to the drug wars to the east coast versus west coast to disc records to drill music to you know just all that stuff destructive living fast life covetousness hip-hop has is, is completely changed the minds of a generation right gangster rap you know how many people die behind gangster rap and just hip-hop in general the whole situation with your hood and your colors and your set and all this stuff and the dude was right on a lot of levels but it all goes back to the curses now in the bible it says again zechariah 11 and 4 thus said the lord my god feed the flock of the slaughter that's what you're known as the flock of the slaughter whose possessors slay them and hold themselves not guilty now possessors is all nations but particularly this is talking about esau edom the so-called white man and therein you got the fake Jews, the Jewish people, because they're they're your possessors. And what do they do? They sponsor the hip hop. They set you up. They tell you what kind of songs to make, and they all offer the highest, the uh, <clears throat> the most lucrative, the most lucrative purses, right? The most lucrative paydays for those that that push the wrong negative music. Okay, the the, the destructive music, <clears throat> whose possessors slay them. And hold themselves not guilty. And they that sell them say, Blessed be the Lord, for I am rich. And their own shepherds pity them not. Now, this guy, this funeral director, he ain't blaming the black church. The black church is also part of it. They're part of that destructive mechanism that used to destroy you. So is Islam. And all these false religions are all used as a mechanism to make you kill. Because Muslims get mad. They rise up and they kill, you know, so-called Negroes. Now, when you look in the scriptures and they kill one another, let's say black Muslims, they got a lot to do with killing. They got a lot to do with the drugs and the violence and, and, and music. Because look, in hip hop, 
most of the rappers profess themselves to be Muslims or five or five percenters or some form of that branch. So, you know, they don't get off scot-free. But anyway, in the scriptures, America is known as uh, Babylon the Great, among other names, spiritual Sodom and Edom. I'm slacking like spiritual Sodom in Egypt and also Basra or Edom. Right. That's what this place is known as. And, uh, this place is also known as the valley of the shadow of death. This is Job chapter 10, verse 20. It says, are not my days few? Cease then and let me alone that I may take comfort a little. Before I go whence I shall not return even to the land of darkness and the shadow of death. A land of darkness as darkness itself and of the shadow of death without any order and where the light is as darkness. Now, somebody may say, well, that's talking about when you die. No, it's not talking about when you die. Because when you die, you go to the spirit world and it's order there. This says a land of darkness as darkness itself and of the shadow of death without any order and where the light is as darkness. In the heavens, it's complete order. You see? So it's referring to America, Babylon, the great, the valley of the shadow of death. Now, if you go to the Deuteronomy 28, 15, what does it say? Consequences for disobedience. This is the, 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 uh, the cause of so-called Negroes, Latinos, and Native Americans perishing off of the earth. Okay. Dying in great numbers. The curses. It all goes back to the curses. Now, the guy mentioned... Right, this guy Muhammad, I forget I forgot the dude first. I don't know if he said Leon Muhammad or whatever. But it's just a typical Muslim. He even speaks like that. Oh, it's Tyrone. You can see it in the background. Tyrone Muhammad. Okay. So this dude right here, he's also a contributor of your death. Now I, I won't get on this guy because I'll say he he spoke up. He said some good things, but this is the point. You think you so called Negroes think that some kind of way you're gonna be the reason why you don't die. You're not gonna be the reason why you don't die. You got to repent and the heavenly father will pardon you for your iniquity because he put you under the curses. This is Deuteronomy 28, 15 and all of that organ harvesting and selling your organs on the black market and doing this and doing that. It's because it goes back to disobedience. You disobeyed the heavenly father and he put you in all nations of the earth in captivity. Let's just go there real quick. You've been cast off into every nation of the earth and you've been worshiping idols, right? And it says, uh, Deuteronomy 28, 64, and the Lord shall scatter thee among all people from the one end of the earth, even unto the other. And there thou shalt serve other gods, which neither thou nor thy fathers have known, even wood and stone. And that goes for Tyrone Muhammad, too. He's the Israelite, but he's worshiping a false god. He's worshiping idols. He worships, you know, the God of Islam. And these these uh, people that he's speaking about, they worship the gods of hip hop and self and pride or whatever whatever other gods white jesus buddhism all these idols they've been worshiping it's all contributing to your death black culture the gods of egypt see that's where it's leading you to death so even though you you know you commit iniquity and the heavenly father said if you did that what was going to come on you man now when you go to deuteronomy 28 15 let's just go up to the top it says this but it shall come to pass if thou wilt not hearken unto the voice of the Lord, thy power to observe, to do all his commandments and his statutes, which I command thee this day, that all these curses shall come upon thee and overtake thee. And when you go through the curses carefully, you see that everything that you're suffering from, from the diseases to killing one another to, you know, <clears throat> just everything, man, the confusion that you're under, not knowing which gods to worship it's all there. It's all there in the curses, man. Even the names you'll be called, it's all here. But what's going on is you Negroes, Latinos, and Native Americans, you've refused to repent. So you're going to commit the same uh, same things over and over. You're, gonna, you're in a cycle now. You're in a perpetual cycle. And these people that are over you, they're not here for your good. They were put here to punish you. Verse 45 says, Moreover, all these curses shall come upon thee, and shall pursue thee and overtake thee till thou be destroyed. See, that's the goal of the curses is to destroy you. The only way to get out of this is to repent. But until then, you're going to keep dying. You're going to keep killing one another. You're going to keep on worshiping idols, which is going to further lead to more death. 
You're caught in a perpetual cycle. But why? Because you were you were going off to begin with. Because thou hearkenest not unto the voice of the Lord thy God to keep his commandments and his statutes, which he commanded thee. And they shall be upon thee for a sign and for a wonder and upon thy seed forever. See, that's the whole thing. It's punishment. I just want to jump in real quick. Um, <clears throat> this is uh, Deuteronomy 28, 54. And it's really dealing with, this, with the uh, siege during the time of 70 AD. But even now, you ne Negroes still act in this manner. It says, so that the man that is tender among you and very delicate, his eye shall be evil toward his brother and toward the wife of his bosom and toward the remnant of his children, which he shall leave, you know, which again, like I said, is going into the siege and the straightness that happened during 60 AD. But you can, you know, you can also apply it to every other thing, man, that you, you so-called Negroes do, because black culture is the culture of death. If you even go down here, it says, uh, Let's go back to Deuteronomy 28, 64. It says, And the Lord shall scatter thee among all people from the one end of the earth, even until the other. Now you got scattered everywhere. And there thou shalt serve other gods, which neither thou nor thy fathers have known, even wood and stone. Listen. And among these nations shalt thou find no ease, neither shall the soul of thy foot have rest, but the Lord shall give thee there a trembling heart and a failing of eyes and sorrow of mind. This is the point. And thy life shall hang in doubt before thee. And thou shalt fear day and night and shall have none assurance of thy life. Right? You're going to be dropping dead in the streets. From the cops killing you to the gang warfare to your brother every day, Jake, blasting you over a fucking eight ball jacket or some, some sneakers, some Jordans, some Air Force Ones, robbing you. You know, whatever it be. The Lord put perpetual curses that result in death because of iniquity. And continual sin, continual sin and continual wickedness and disobedience. And you won't repent. How do you think the change is going to come about if you're still doing the same works that bring forth death? And this guy, you know, and this video is old. It's probably two, two or three years old now. But even now, it's happening on a larger scale. From the diseases, from everything that this guy mentioned and he did mention, it's all there. In the morning thou shalt say, would God it were even? And that even thou shalt say with the Most High, it were morning for the fear of thine heart, wherewith thou shalt fear and for the sight of thine eyes, which thou shalt see. There you go. Perpetual death. Black culture results in death, man. And it goes all the way back to the time when the Lord was on the scene. And before you, you uh, had him crucified, he said this, this here. Let me read it. Matthew 23 and 34. <clears throat> I'm going to start it. At uh, I'll start at 29. He was talking to the wicked scribes and Pharisees, but it, it went on to the rest of the house of Israel, man. Because what? You are the children of them that kill the prophets, the children of the prophet killers. He says, Woe unto you, scribes and Pharisees, hypocrites, because you build the tombs of the prophets and garnish the sepulchres of the righteous. righteous. And say, if we had been in the days of our fathers... We would not have been partakers with them in the blood of the prophets. Wherefore, ye be witnesses unto yourselves that ye are the children of them which killed the prophets. Fill ye up then the measure of your fathers. You're going to do the same thing that your fathers did. And you even now, you, you people go against the prophets. If we, was in, if we was out there on the street teaching and Tyrone Muhammad came by, he wouldn't listen to what we say. He'll tell us he know more than we know because he's in Islam. If that's what he's in or if he's a black Christian, he'll try to act like he know more than us. You're never going to get it, man. Your people are not going to repent. Wherefore, behold, I send unto you prophets and wise men and scribes. And some of them you shall kill and crucify. And some of them you shall scourge in your synagogues and persecute them from city to city. Why was that said? That upon you may come all the righteous blood shed upon the earth. From the blood of righteous Abel unto the blood of Zacharias, son of Barachias, whom ye slew between the temple and the altar. Verily I say unto you, all these things shall come upon this generation. The Lord said, look, you're going to come against the prophets. You're going to crucify them. You're going to have them put in prison. You're going to do all kinds of stuff, but the blood is going to come back on you. And after that, what happened? You went on to, to order the Lord to be crucified by the enemy. This is Matthew 27.
and you, and even now with that hip hop shit, right? The hip hop shit, you pick murderers, or you put out an image of murderers, drug dealers, gangsters over the men of the Lord. You prefer that type of nigga. You what do the women say? I gotta have a rough neck. I want a thug. I want a drug dealer over a doctor or physician, whatever. You choose all the things that are negative that are wrong. That's what our people choose. Salaki here. I'm trying to see what time it is. Can't even do it. <clears throat> anyway, let's continue on. So Matthew 27, 19 said, when he was sat down on the judgment seat, this is talking about Pontius Pilate, his wife sent it to him saying, have thou nothing to do with that just man, for I have suffered many things this day in a dream because of him. But the chief priests and elders persuaded the multitude that they should seek Barabbas and destroy Yahweh Shai. Why would you sentence, have the son of man sentenced to death who never committed a sin, but asked for a robber to be let out, a, a murderer to be released? The governor answered and said unto them, Whether of the twain will ye that I release unto you? They said, Barabbas. Pilate saith unto them, What shall I do then with Yahweh Shai, which is called Hamashiach? They all said to him, let him be crucified. And the governor said, why? What evil hath he done? But they cried out the more, let him be crucified. When Pilate saw that he could not, could prevail nothing, but that rather a tumult was made, he took water and washed his hands before the multitude, saying, I am innocent of the blood of this just person. See ye to it. Didn't the Lord say that? He said, uh, Fill you up then the measure of your fathers. That was in verse in uh, chapter 23. This is 27. Then answered all the people and said, His blood be upon us and on our children. So now when Tyrone Muhammad is going on and on about your body parts being taken, your organs, and you killing each other, and you doing this and that, and why don't you stop? Well, he doesn't understand what's going on. We understand what's going on. The Lord is, is, is calling that blood back. All that righteous blood that was shed, like how I told you in Matthew 23. And as you said, you put on your own selves in Matthew 27. You're them same people coming back. The curses is going to exact all that blood. Then answered all the people and said, his blood be on us and on our children. That wasn't just the, the, the chief priests and the, and the scribes and Pharisees. It said all the people. Then released he Barabbas under them. And when he had scourged Yahweh he delivered him to be crucified. You put the blood on yourself. And at the end of the day, if you understood the scriptures, you would know that the Heavenly Father is in charge of death. So if Tyrone Muhammad is crying and whining about bullet holes and this and that, in which he's guilty too. Because for the most part, when you have when you own them funeral homes, you got to be hooked up too. You got to be a mason. You got to be involved in it, right? He throwing signs and doing, excuse me, doing stuff with his hands. We know about that stuff, man. These funeral directors... Hey, the most I had him had him speak out. Okay, great. But he still, you know, you know his pockets getting stuffed. You're making a lot of money in the black funeral home. That's just a lot he's been given, but you know a little bit about it. I bet it I bet that dude is a mason. I'm sure of it. Deuteronomy 32, 39. See now that I, even I am he, and there is no God with me. I kill and I make alive. I wound and I heal. Neither is there any that can deliver out of my hand. For I lift up my hand to heaven and say, I live forever. It's the Heavenly Father that's robbing you of your children. Why? Because of what you did to his son. And what you continue to do now. Because the wages of sin is death. The black funeral director, he made a lot of sense. But at the same time, he don't even know what's going on. This dude got not a stick of hair on his face. He's wearing a suit. Right? He's in a false religion. He worships idols. Even if he don't worship, even if he's not Islamic. He's probably a black Christian. He ain't no Hebrew Israelite. When you seen him on the highways and head just preaching the gospel. When you seen him doing anything to help the ministry. He's a part of black culture, man. And black culture just brings death. That's all it does. And the most high is the one that's bringing that death. But he's, he's using these things to pay you all back, man. To pay us back. 1 Samuel 2 and 6. The Lord killeth and maketh alive. You hear that? The Lord killed the maker of the life. He bringeth down to the grave and bringeth up. See? So if your child got shot up and then he had to go visit Tyrone Muhammad or others like him in every state, in every city, in every country, wherever the Israelites are scattered, to prepare your bodies, it's because the Lord wanted that to happen. 
The Lord wanted you to visit the, the funeral home, man. And the only way out is through repentance. That's it. There's no other way. You can't smooth talk. You can't band together, get black dollars. None of that shit is going to help. You got to repent. That's the only way your sins going to be forgiven. That's the only way you're going to be saved. Let's get one last scripture. I'm just going to grab this one quick. This is going to be Amos. I'm sorry, not Amos. Acts 3.19. This is Acts chapter 3 and verse 19. It says plainly, Repent ye therefore and be converted. Tyrone Muhammad, you got to be converted. You got to repent and be converted, right? Those people that you you preparing their bodies, <laughs> hey man, they ain't repent and be converted. That's why they filled up with bullet holes, men and women. That's why they dying the way they dying. Oh, and getting beat to death and fighting one another, doing all that. They're doing that because why? Demons came on them, man. And the curses are riding out people indefinitely. You're not going to pull yourself up by your bootstraps and deliver your own selves, man. It's not going to happen. As long as you have sin present, you're going to always be on the bottom because the wages of sin is death. You're going to always perish. Until you put that out of your life, repent to the Lord, and then when he comes, he's going to change you into a new body, man. Repent ye therefore and be converted that your sins may be blotted out. When the times of refreshing shall come from the presence of the Lord and to, and to make it more complete. When you repent, Yahweh Shai is going to cover your sins, right? Because we all still have sins. But Yahweh Shai will cover the sins of the elect on this side. And when he comes at his second coming, you receive new bodies which are not capable of sin. Because on this side, sin is going to nail you. And the black funeral director is going to continue to, you know, until the time that somebody got to prepare his body. So... Just a quick lesson, man. Black culture is not going to bring you anything but death. All praise to Yahweh by Hashem, Yahweh Shah. Shalom.